emergency meeting of the city council on Monday, April 20th. Uh, uh, today uh, at 6 p.m. Uh, in council chambers. Uh, we will have an invitation by Tim Spence and we will all stand for the press. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together again. Lord, we ask that you would look over this city and what we're going through at this time. We ask that you, as a governing body, help us make good, sound decisions, and we pray for the family of the young man that was um, killed today, and we pray for the city, for peace in the city. Now, Lord, we give you glory, we thank you in advance for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Attorney Morgan was uh, contacted. He is trying to wrap up and get here. Um, I believe he's on the way. Um, and that was the last response that I got that he was going to try to meet. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. And, and I apologize. I did uh, recognize the mayor pro tem, but I thought that he had something that he had expected to come in. And I did not want to go into a business type thing. And I, I was assuming that that was the key language. So I do apologize. As I began to say, uh, before we're going to move on, I would like to just look a quick uh, synopsis of Friday emergency meeting. Um, because of, of a shooting incident in the city this morning, uh, the council members have assembled to gather information from management and our chief of police. First, I would like to make it perfectly clear that the Elizabeth City Police Department was not involved in the shooting that occurred. The Pasquotank County Sheriff's Department was the entity in charge of the crime scene. The city police arrived on the scene after receiving a 911 indicating a 911 call indicating shots fired. And they uh, went up on the scene in order to secure the perimeter. Any details concerning the incident should be directed uh, to the Pasquotank County Sheriff's Department. In lieu of incidents that currently occurring across the country, we thought it would be prudent to address the citizens of the city with what we know and to allay their concerns about the city's involvement. Also, in an abundance of, uh, abundance of caution, for the safety of our city employees, management allowed the city employees to leave at 2 p.m. today. However, they will be back on regular schedule tomorrow. Um, again, I want to emphasize that we are being proactive, and we thank you for uh, coming in. Now we yield to our city manager, Mr. Freeman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, before I get into that, uh, Attorney Morgan just texted me, Councilman Morgan, he's not going to be able to make it. He was still in that meeting in Gates County, um, but he said that he would be available by phone if we needed to access him. Thank you for the information. 
You're welcome. Um, so, bef before I get started, I, I do want to um, answer some of the texts that are coming in now. I want to make sure that everyone watching and listening have access to the meeting. Um, you can go to cityofec.com and at the bottom of the screen you will see live council meeting. You can click on that and uh, Mr. Pedro Holly is here. He'll be able to let you in and you can just watch um, and he is monitoring that, that process for us. If you do, if you're unable to get uh, access, uh, please uh, shoot us an email and we'll get you in. Uh, but you should be able to access it again on www.cityofec.com. At the bottom of the screen is live council meeting. Just click on that and that should give you access. Um, today is a very sad day in the city of Elizabeth City. Uh, on behalf of the staff and the organization, we extend our most heartfelt prayers and condolences to the family of Mr. Andrew Brown. We pray extensive prayer of calm and peace over the city and we pray that you will allow the FBI to serve us well. Um, on, the, on behalf of the organization, we will continue to serve the great citizens of Elizabeth City um, as best we can with a very high honor. Um, as your manager, serve you, we're here to help you. Um, please do not be afraid or be cautious to reach out to us to help as best we can. We've got the investigation is very fluid. Um, the FBI has full control of that, so we don't have any answers in, in that term, but if we can help you in any other matter, we're here to help. Um, and now, Madam Mayor, if, you, if I may, I'll turn it over to our police chief. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor and members of City Council. Thank you, uh, Manager Freeman. Uh, I also echo the sentiments and offer my sincere condolences to the Andrew uh, Brown family and this entire community. Uh, as the mayor gave a synopsis of the events that transpired this morning, uh, the police department is uh, fully engaged uh, to bring some peace, calm uh, to our community. And I have been speaking with community uh, leaders throughout this city all morning uh, in regards to this tra tragic event. Uh, the police department was not involved into the service of the search warrant. However, we did receive a call for service in regards to shots fired around eight o'clock this morning. Uh, we responded and we've been on scene uh, assisting with scene security as well as uh, going about our normal calls for service throughout the uh, normal course of the business of the day for the police department. And so the SBI is leading the uh, investigation and the Paso Kent County Sheriff's Office is leading their own internal investigation into the matter as well. And uh, that's where we are right now. And uh, we, we also will remain uh, vigilant uh, for the citizens of, of this city. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, next on the uh, agenda, Mr. Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. And as we're speaking, um, I'm doing, uh, just to let everybody know, I'm recording Facebook Live because right now we got 600 people watching from my stream. Uh, so these are the people that are not equipped with getting the city uh, site up. So right now we got about 600 people watching from this live. So my reason uh, and take in today, I'm calling this special meeting is because, you know, this event happened today in our city 
and one of the in the third war, which is one of the four wars that represents our city. And we have a lot of hurt people. We have a lot of hurt people uh, in this city. Um, as we walked out, myself, Councilman uh, Horton, and Brooks, as we walked out today uh, into uh, the scene on where things took place, you know, uh, there were people crying. Uh, there were people that even walked, as we walked up, were saying that, you know, here comes the city council that don't do anything, that don't, you know, voice our concerns, that don't, you know, take up for our citizens in the community. And that alone bothered me because I know individually what, you know, I stand for and what we try to, or what I try to bring to the table uh, around this uh, council about, you know, we talk about unity and coming together all the time. And so when you hear, you know, like we heard today, uh, people crying out for help and answers as to why. And, you know, we, we are elected officials. Uh, you know, we're not the SBI, we're not the police department. You know, we, we, we were not definitely trying to overstep our boundaries. However, you know, people in the community, they look at, you know, police officers, they look at council members, they look at the city manager, they look at the mayor uh, to come to them. You know, when they have questions, they come to us for answers. And so, you know, we went out there today just to try to get some clarity on what was taking place or what had taken place. And, you know, the officers, you know, told us that we needed to back up, you know, stand down, stand back or whatever it is that what they're saying. And so, you know, we weren't able to give any type of peace or any type of anything to, you know, everybody that was out there to try to find out what's going on. And, you know, I stand for peace. I stand for unity. Uh, I know a lot, all of us around the table stand for the same thing. And we just got to come together, you know, now as a city and as a city council, you know, we got to come together now like never before. You know, there's people outside. There's people watching on this live. There's people, I mean, I don't think some of you like really understood or understanding what happened today. Like, I never thought that I would look at CNN News and see my hometown. You know, CNN News, the world news. You know, 5 o'clock, you look, Elizabeth City, North Carolina, a little over Elizabeth City, North Carolina, where, you know, we see all this stuff happening all over the world, but we never thought that something like this would happen in our town. And people are afraid. You know, people are afraid. We got businesses on Airhouse Street boarding up their buildings. You know, they're afraid that you know, that the riots are going to start. They're afraid that, you know, people, that the shootings and stuff are going to get, you know, we, you know, we have our children out here. Uh, I'm a black man, you know, and I can't stand here tonight or sit here tonight and say that I'm not afraid or that I don't think about my own life, you know, because I'm a black man. And it's like, you know, I feel like that we are, that we're targeted and, you know, I have three black sons, you know, that's growing up in this world. What am I going to tell them, you know, when they get older, you know, um, and time for them to start driving or time for them to start, you know, being active in the community? What am I going to tell them? Am I going to even be here to tell them anything about the police or the law enforcement or, you know, just trying to make sure that they're, you know, crossing every T or dotting every I? I mean, we're afraid, you know, as a black man standing, sitting here tonight. I'm afraid, you know, I mean, let's be real. We talk about transparency. I'm going to be transparent. I'm afraid as a black man walking around in this city, driving my car down the road, trying to make sure that I'm driving the speed limit, trying to make sure that I wear my seatbelt, trying to make sure that I do everything right because I don't want an officer to get behind me, you know, a city cop, you know, I mean, a sheriff, a highway patrolman. It doesn't even have to be in my hometown. I could be somewhere else. I'm afraid that I may be the next one that, you know, my family have to see on the news that I was gunned down or, or you know, so my, to go back to, you know, why I would agree to calling this, this special meeting, because we have to let our citizens know that elected us, that we stand behind them, that we stand behind the Brown family, that, you know, we're standing, you know, and trusting for transparency with the SBI, that we're trusting that they're going to do the right thing, that they're going to bring, you know, the facts to our citizens, to us, and that, you know, we know that everyone is hurt. We know that, you know, there's so many answers that people want, uh, so many questions that people want answers to, and we're still very early in this investigation. And, you know, a lot of the questions that people are asking, you know, we don't know the answers to, you know, because there's a process and we understand that process. But through that process, 
We just want to make sure that it's transparency, that there's no covering up that, you know, that we're going to be, that, you know, that, that the SBI is going to do their job, that they're going to bring back the facts and the truth, and that the city council of Elizabeth City, that we are standing behind our citizens and that we want to keep this city as safe as we can. I mean, you know, we can't control what people do, you know, because that was said today, you know, we letting all this stuff happen. No, we can't control what people go out here in this community, in this world and do. No, I don't want nobody to go and shoot up someone or someplace. And I'm sure uh, Councilman Rufier doesn't want anybody to go out here and shoot up somebody or somewhere. So we don't promote violence. We don't promote gun guns. We don't promote some of this stuff that's happening, especially what happened today. So we just want to let our citizens know that we are here and we don't like it no more than what anybody else likes it that you know that's outside or that's watching online or that was out there on the scene today and you know i'm praying that god would keep us covered you know that his grace you know that we talk about you know some of the preachers around the table that we talk about god's grace is sufficient and i'm praying that his grace and mercy i'm trying to keep myself from crying because it's real it's very real and some of you at the table may not understand the pain that we feel as black people, as a black man, it's real out here. And until you have to stand in a person's shoes, you can't say, oh, I know how you feel, or it's going to be all right. How do you know it's going to be all right? Because you don't know you're not us. You don't walk in these shoes. You know, you're not wearing these black lives matter. And we're not saying that only black lives matter. Everybody lives matter. But right now, the day that we're in, we are feel like we're being targeted. We are being targeted. You know, we need help. You know, this day and time is it's, it's, it's sad. It's hurt. It hurts. You know, it hurts to be a black man this day and time. It hurts because of what we have to go through and what we have to see our other uh, fellow uh, black people or black men have to go through in this town. It hurts. So I dare not let someone come up to me of the opposite race and tell me that it's going to be OK or we know. how. No, you don't know how we feel as black people. You don't know how we feel. So we're hurting and we're not trying to get anybody to take any size. I just want the people of Elizabeth City to know that we hear you and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that we continue because it didn't just start today. We didn't, we didn't just start wanting the violence to stop. If you've been watching the city council meetings online uh, via the stream or that we have going on, we've been talking about this violence in that particular area of this town for a while now. We have been talking. Councilman Brooks has been fighting, you know, for cameras or we, we, we want to assist the chief and being able to get more police officers so that, you know, more patrolling and stuff can be done. So it didn't just start this meeting tonight, didn't just start this process that we have been trying. We have been trying for a long time to bring this violence to an end. We are a small town at heart. You know, like I said, we on CNN News. Who would ever thought? You know, little old Elizabeth City, the harbor of hospitality, you know, where we do have some of the finest police officers. We do. And thank you, Chief Buffalo. No, it didn't have anything to do with your department. You are not even aware that this was taking place this morning. But, you know, on behalf of myself, I just want to say thank you for all that you do and for the, all that your officers do do to try to protect and keep us safe. You know, because it, it, it just didn't start today. I mean, a whole lot of, thank God that, you know, that it hasn't been worse than what it was today, you know, because of what you and your department do, you know, so thank you, sir. You know, if nobody else says thank you, some people may not agree with me on this live for thanking the police department, but thank you. I want to go on record that I am thanking you for what you do and for what your officers strive to do for us every single day, because it does matter. Y'all do matter, you know, and so... Uh, you know, just we just want to remind everybody to just try to stay calm, try to stay calm, try to, you know, we got to give this thing to God. We got to trust that the SBA is going to do their job and myself, along with everybody around this table, we're going to do our best to make sure that we keep our community and our city safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Morgan. Yes, ma'am, Mayor. There, talking to your mic. Let me just, uh, Councilman Atkins really said almost everything that I wanted to say um, because we're in a 
in, in, a, in a very pivotal place and moment in Elizabeth City. You know, Albert Einstein said that the world is a dangerous place to live, not because of the people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything. And that's why we have to be here tonight to do something about this incident to provide not pointing fingers at any agency, at any officer, but the people of Elizabeth City that live here, that are rooted here, they desire a right to know what took place this morning. As I sit here and I see all the persons that have come out today, um, I hear them outside, chanting outside, because there is a, a moment of hurt in Elizabeth City. People are feeling that I never thought that this would happen here. And it's happened here. And what oftentimes now is adding insult to injury is the fact that we're in a process. And we respect the process. I, I would like to commend <coughs> that the SBI has been brought in. That's a powerful statement to know that we're not looking at a, a possible um, investigation where uh, local persons are doing, because we need transparency. And that's why, Madam Mayor, when I went outside at today and I was with the, uh, the persons of the community and they were looking it up, they said, what are you all going to do about it? And quite naturally, we could have stayed home. We could have waited for the process. But we need to assure the residents of Elizabeth City that this council, and I think we've already spoken volumes tonight because we have 100% of our council here today that represents the four different wards of this community. So that shows that we as a whole are concerned. So now that we've sent a message that we're concerned, we've sent a message that our police department was not involved in this, that it was in fact the county, but we need trans. Transparency, And not only do we need transparency, we need accountability for this family to not have answers, for this family not to have answers. And what I personally want to say, um, I was glad that earlier when I made a statement that the sheriff actually has come. And while it was brief, he did address the community. He did address the media. And that was a step in the right direction. But Madam Mayor and fellow council members, what I feel now as an act of transparency and as we've watched these events unfold in so many other cities where African-Americans, where black men, black women have wrongfully died. We can't say that happened here yet. We don't have the information, but it needs to be put out in the forefront. The body cameras, uh, that needs to be released immediately. The footage from the end, and I know I'm just one council member, but that footage from those body cameras needs to be released immediately, such as it has been in other cases. That footage needs to be released immediately so this family and this community would be able to see. We don't need to try to sweep anything under the rug. Because a lot of persons, they cannot relate to our struggle. They cannot relate, you know, as, as a black entrepreneur myself, and I, I have a nice ride, and I ride certain places, and I get stereotyped. They can't relate to that. And all I can think about is I have a three-year-old son. I thought about if that could have been my son or even myself today. We need answers. We need answers. And that's why I thank Councilman Brooks and I thank Councilman Atkins for coming together. We're not here to point fingers. We're not here to even blame. We're just here to one of the answer to one question, and that is what happened? What happened? And when will we know what happened? And I'm pushing, and that's why, um, you know, I'm pushing for the, the warrant needs to be released for the, the media and those that would like to see. We, we need answers. These body cameras, if, if it was a justified shooting, that would say a lot. If it was unjustified, listen, the proof is in the pudding. Let's not hide behind anything. Let's be a transparent people. And I want to thank our manager and I want to thank um, Chief Buffalo, who have, he's here tonight. He was transparent. Let's put the facts out there. Let's come together and let's not have violence. Let's not, let's come together and have unity. But if people feel like that things are not right, 
and they feel like that their voice is not being heard, when if they feel oppressed and they feel like that's not coming forth, that no one cares. That's when you have retaliation. That's when cities are burned down. That's when people go up and down the street. And the reason there's some businesses that are concerned now is because they don't know what this process entails. They don't know what it looks like. People are hurting and hurt people hurt people. So we have to come together. It's a must. And I want to thank this council for being concerned because we're all concerned. We're all concerned. And all I'm asking for is accountability and transparency. Accountability and transparency. And my prayers are with the Brown family. My prayers are with our district attorney and our sheriff. And I believe by faith that they will give us transparency and accountability. That's all I ask for. I'm not asking for a whole lot, but transparency and accountability because we deserve it. Thank you. I was okay with that, you know. I was okay that people were calling me on my phone. And what I tell them is that I don't know anything yet. Now, and I had to get that out of the way to say this. I think uh, Councilman Horton and Councilman Atkins, when I arrived there, they were already there, you know. And I applaud that. And, and later, uh, uh, Councilman Spence was at work, and he got, I mean, all that stuff because he was at work. But they was already there and listen to the crowd, what they were saying. And uh, I have to say this, uh, they addressed it well, but personally, sitting on council for 12 years off and on, sitting on council, I've been arrested four times sitting on council. Watch what I tell you. The first time I got arrested for making a statement to the police. You're wrong using profanity against those kids. The process went on and stuff, and it was kicked out. I'm going to say that. I called 10 on your side. That was back in the 90s. A middle-aged white guy answered the phone. He said, Councilman Brooks, he said, don't take this wrong. As a retired military guy, white and male, I can't imagine going through what you just went through. And, it, and what I'm telling you is that it has been an ongoing process. It didn't stop there in the 90s. That was the first and I've been arrested three or four times after that, sitting on council as an elected official. As an elected official. And I have to wonder, is something trying to hold me back and wonder if it's because I'm black? Based on the statement that he said to me, this is not fabricated. He said that to me, 10 on your side. Watch. I got arrested for quoting a scripture. And I'm thinking, man, for quoting a scripture? I got arrested. How in the world do that go before the court for quoting a scripture? Does the Constitution apply to me as a black man? What about freedom of religion and freedom of expression and freedom of speech without any aggression whatsoever? No one have ever accused me of being aggressive except for in my speech. You might not like how I say it. You know, so I had to get that out of the way. So when I get home and turn to CNN, you know, and I, and I have to deal about that. And I agree with uh, uh, the two counselors spoke. When I see Elizabeth City on the map, and the guy was talking about Elizabeth City and put them in the same category as those other uh, uh, murders. He put them in the same category with the same sadness. You know, and I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. We know, and, I, and, and, and the reason why we call this meeting, I got to get back in touch on that, is because the people wanted answers. They was questioning us. And the best way to do it is in full time. Let them hear what you are saying to us. We don't need to be the middleman when they can listen to it themselves. Whatever y'all say to us, they hear it themselves. We only know what y'all say until the investigation is complete. We don't know what happened, but mm -hmm. I do know this. 
If it's unjustified, it's murder. If it's unjustified, it's murder. That I do know. And uh, uh, I don't, uh, when those that say that, just let the county and, and, and deal with it, I, I kept hearing that. And, 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 I, and, and, and it kind of runs through me in a very bad way because we know that the city is part of the county. The city is part of the county. We pay county and city and county taxes. We're part of the county. So in part, they have to answer to us. So I'm go to also, with the information, I'm not talking about giving us blow by blow with investigation, but when it's complete, then we'll hear that and we can tell the public or uh, uh, the chief or, or the sheriff can tell the public what the findings are. That's not our job, you know. But our job is to make sure that the citizens of Elizabeth City is safe. And so the question is, what's the objective? The answer is simple. The objective is justice. That's what the objective is. And Frederick Douglass said it best. As long as we agree with the objectives, we should never fall out amongst each other because we have different strategies, methods, <laughs> and tactics in achieving our objectives. The objective is justice. You know, we're not saying the uh, uh, police department was wrong, but we're not, not, not the city police department, the sheriff department. Let me get this right because y'all don't have no hand in it. We're not saying that the sheriff department was wrong, but we're not saying it was right either because we don't know anything. Because the bits and pieces that we were hearing from, from the people that was uh, emotional, and then what I heard the sheriff say on CNN, they didn't match. So there's no way we're going to put something out there that uh, 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 he said, she said stuff. It doesn't make any sense. So the purpose of this meeting to call now is that make sure, see, this is a venting process. Think about it. When you go to a funeral, you are mourning a death of a loved one. They are mourning the death of a loved one. Let them vent in their way. That's what they vent. There's no aggression. Ain't nobody trying to rush anything. Let them vent in their way. I have three sons, and I'll say this, and I'll say this, and maybe I shouldn't, but I'll say it anyway. I have three sons. I can't imagine something like that happen to one of my sons. I will go straight to the sheriff's department and say, lock me up. I said, lock me up. Because I would like to say, as a minister of the gospel, I like to say, I would say, God bless you, child and peace. I would like to think that I would do that, but just in case it don't come out like that. If I can tell you, and I, I had this conversation with the chief. I can say it. <laughs> I've been arrested so many times. It was funny when I had to tell, like, you remember, chief, and, and I went through that. But this is what I told the chief. I was so paranoid. I saw the chief one time. I said, chief, tell your police officer to stop following me. <laughs> Everywhere I go, I see them. They following me. He said, they ain't following you. I was just that paranoid as a black man sitting on council elected official. And chief will tell you, I said that to him. I don't know if they will follow me or not, but I sure was paranoid. How can an elected official in the city of Elizabeth City feel paranoid that something's not going to happen right to him just because he's riding around in Elizabeth City? And it's sad because I can't, as a, it's hard. And I know sometimes it might be hard for, I, I know I'm rumbling on and on and I need, need to uh, shut down, but it's hard to really let you feel what I feel as a black man on a daily basis, it's hard. It's, it's really hard. I'm telling you, it's hard. It's really hard. I can't phantom. I'm so simple. I can't phantom in a George Floyd court case. To me, it was a no-brainer. But it was a possibility. All they needed was one juror. And it would have been a hung juror. Can you imagine? One person. And they didn't have to go out the fast. They can say that I had a gut feeling because I sat on the jury room for it. And what they said, I had a gut feeling, not even based off the evidence. And so what we're doing is now is making sure that those that can see it on the website, listen to what uh, the city manager and the chief is saying to us. We as counselors, we don't have no answers. I'm not even going to put any theories or what could have. I'm, I'm not going to. I won't do that, <laughs> you know. 
but eventually we're going to know uh, we're going to have the pieces of the puzzle that we can put together to make it complete, and we can come up to a conclusion if this fact or is this fiction. And so the meeting was called uh, not to uh, uh, showboat anything. The meeting was called to let these people grieve in their way. Because like I said again, and I'll leave it with this, because I believe life and death is in the power of the tongue, and I don't want to speak nothing. If I have three grown sons, if this had happened to one of my sons, I would went to the police department or the sheriff department and said, lock me up because I don't know what I might do. That's how hurtful it is. It's hurtful. And I feel the same pain with, with the, that's a loved one, no matter what. Because I listen to them try to discredit uh, uh, George Floyd. And I'm sure in investigation, if they ever went to court or anything, they're going to discredit, try to discredit this young guy. Let me tell you something. Once you commit a crime and you go to jail and paid whatever it is for your crime, that crime shouldn't have nothing to do with the next thing that you do that's outside the bounds of the law. But what they do is that, you know, because I can imagine. I can imagine. Right now, Brooks. Brooks, if somebody arrests me now, and I don't want to talk about that either because y'all don't have a problem arresting me. <laughs> if somebody arrests me, I can imagine. They'll go back and talk about all those communicating threats and all the time I've been arrested. They, don't, they won't talk about the three and a half months we were talking about putting cameras and how we were talking about crime on Roanoke and all that stuff. They ain't going to talk about that. They ain't going to talk about all the other stuff that you can look on a videotape and see what their, their battle have been over the years in a poor community. They ain't going to talk about that. One thing I can say, this is documented. For three and a half months, we've been talking about cameras and Roanoke crime for three and a half months. So I'm really not surprised that it happened. We were sending in warning signals. Y'all can't pr predict when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, but it happened. And now all over the world, they know a little town called Elizabeth City have the same uh, 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 law enforcement shooting a civilian as the rest of the United States. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'll open up the floor just to inject that uh, have something to say. I'll just open it up to you all before we adjourn. Uh, if you do have something to say, just raise your hand. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I kind of want to approach this um, in a dual role. Um, one, as a council person, um, being third ward, this happened in third ward. Um, I want to give the family my condolences, and I want to ask the citizens of the third ward to just trust the process for right now. Uh, we can't, we don't know facts, and I've been asked a lot of questions, and I can't answer them. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it happened. I don't know when it happened. I mean, what caused it to happen. But I do know that I'm not, I don't settle for any answer. Um, so just tr we're going to trust the process till the investigation is over. And I have enough faith um, in our city and our government to see that we're going to do what's right. Oh, I feel we're going to do what's right. If not, then we won't settle. Um, I... I appreciate the chief and his people, like Councilman um, Atkins said. Um, I've called them on several occasions. They've been on point. Even today, I've seen some of his people talking to people in crowds <clears throat> down the street from what happened. Didn't have to, but they, they got the cars and talked to them. And they was getting abused, but they were still calm and talking to them. And they had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> I do want to make it clear again, this was not... Elizabeth City Police Department. This was the Pasquotec County Sheriff Department. Any questions should be directed to the Sheriff Department. On the other side of the, the Christian side of me is this. No one rejoices when someone gets hurt or killed. My prayer is that God will put peace amongst the family, peace amongst the police, the, the deputy sheriff or whoever shot the guy, because it's affecting it's going to affect him and his life as well. And I speak peace amongst the city. And I pray that God would do that expeditiously and do it in abundance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> I would hate to sit here and not to say anything. 
because I'm gave up after 73. I hope you never do go through the pain that I've gone through. I don't know, I know the motive for this meeting, but judgment, put my mask back on. Judgment is very important. Uh, we can think we making all the right moves, y'all, and be making the wrong moves. Some things you got to leave in God's hands. I think it has, it's been too fresh for us to, you know, get results. Chief, have we gone through the protocol that we supposed to be going through? Councilman Walton, the, the protocol has been initiated uh, by the sheriff's office and being facilitated by the State Bureau of Investigation. Yes. Because all of those other things that's happening in other parts of the country, is something happening different in this, in different in this city. Another entity came from another county to to initiate this uh, problem. That's the problem I have with it. I hear it on the social media. My wife has it. I don't look at it. But one of the uh, activists that were talking said. All they had to do was give it to the police, and they took it, taking it to his house, and he would have came down there and gave, given himself up, and you'll go pay it on Thursday at the courthouse. That's the association we have in this county, in this city. Everybody know everybody else. It didn't have to go to where it went. But in Ecclesiastes 22, let, let God do the judging, and he'll judge for each deed there is. He will judge it, and he'll make it right. But the only thing I can say, somebody else brought the problem to us, and it's going to be up to us. We made for this moment, y'all. We are made for it. That's why you're sitting where you're sitting. And it's according to how we handle it is how it's going to come out. I know one thing we don't. You know, the crowd got louder and louder. Let them vent, man. They need to vent. Let them put on, get on their knees and pray to it also. But you don't know how it's going to go when a protest starts. You hope they bring in a bucket of water. They could be bringing a bucket of gas, and that's not what you want. So let's be mindful, y'all. Let's think about what we do before we do it. Leave it in God's hands, and things will... At this point, I, I think it's pretty mature for me to, or, um, to make a statement about the situation, um, other than to say that this is certainly a, a tragic loss of life, and I certainly feel for the families that are involved. Um, I was glad to hear that our district attorney's office contacted the North Carolina uh, State Bureau of Investigations in such a timely manner this morning and had that investigation. Um, uh, had been to start investigating the um, incident. Um, my only other comment at this time is that I think that we need to uh, just slow down and um, and when I say that I mean just let the SBI uh, conduct conduct their investigation into how and why this happened and why we definitely need answers and the family and community both the family and the community both deserve answers and we need to first step back and take a deep breath and get all the facts so we know what happened and how we need to, to um, address this. And the DA said something today when I watched the press release and I think that it said, it said a lot. We need accurate answers, not fast answers. So please community, just remember that. We need accurate answers. A lot of people, I agree with the council members, a lot of people are hurt and they do need the accurate answers so they can heal. And I do think that our community needed to heal, and I thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, Councilman Lucero? Um, I don't have a lot to add either. I mean, it's, um, it's really great that we could all come out together and, um, and be here on such short notice. But um, I, I am deeply saddened by this tragedy, tragedy and, and what happened this morning. Um, 
my thoughts and prayers are with Mr. Brown's family, uh, everyone who has been impacted, and really with our entire community. So, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, sir. Uh, there are a couple of items that are on the agenda that I have to include, or we have to include, is because the, in the event that um, it would become, become necessary to have a person with an emergency, I just want to run past the uh, council. Uh, I'm going to give it back to the management to, uh, uh, to give it to me. But it is important to note that this information will be information to get out of the real fast. <coughs> And people can assume that it may be the Liberty City Police Department. And I just, everyone has to be I just want to say one more time, is that the Liberty City Police Department was not part of serving a warrant. They were not involved at all. They do not have answers to give you. Uh, some people get mixed up by that. Well, it happened in Liberty City. <coughs> what happened, uh, what some people need to know is that Pastor Tate County has its own department, sheriff's department, and Elizabeth City <coughs> has their police department. And uh, we, sometimes we may work in concert, and sometimes <coughs> they don't. This time they were not working in concert. So uh, people outside may interpret this meeting as we are the ones that are responsible for trying to allay things or, or not be transparent. I don't know how we would think that because we have been very transparent here. We have shown the utmost concern because all eight counselors are here and of course the mayor is here. Uh, whether uh, if any of us thought it was a good idea to bring that contention now on us since we didn't have a dog in the fight, but it happened and we all had a chance to say something and that is a good thing. So now I'm going to go back to the manager for the person. Uh, Sir? Can you say something? So I, I thought about it. Sir? Oh, uh, yes. We don't, we don't have a, the, the Liberty City Police Department. Oh, they mind. have nothing. Yes. Mike. 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 I did. The Liberty City Police Department didn't have uh, uh, anything to do with the incident that happened. But uh, uh, I understand that the, the city is part of the county. So in that sense, I know we got two different parties, the, the uh, sheriff's department and you have the police department. So as, as the uh, chief, as the uh, chief of police and the sheriff, I'm sure they feel law enforcement. They could, uh, they could talk, but since it's in the hands of the FBI, that's moot. That's moot, so uh, I think they understand. And, and, I, and I share with this, and uh, I uh, and, and, uh, got a lot of stuff bothered up in me, but I need to say this and get off on ready. This has been long enough uh, because we don't have any answers. We just know we got to wait for an investigation so we can have some clear and succinct answers. And Dr. King talked about this, and I thought this so that in a speech, part of that speech, he talked about two Americas. He talked one in poverty and one in privilege, and one that he talked about two Americas. And I was gonna gonna throw that out there, but I don't have to. We already understand because it's something that is <coughs> echoed all over the United States, and not just over the United States. This thing with George Floyd echoed in 16 other countries. But in, in a sense, when it comes to the uh, when it when it when it, uh, when the road meets the road, we know that the the police department having anything to do with it. But when it came on CNN, it said in Elizabeth City today. Of course, you see what I'm saying. So yeah. we have to separate facts from fiction, you know, and we let the process go on. And again, I want to thank our, our council important and Atkins and, and, and Tim Call. I want to thank them for they were right there. And I want to thank all of the counselors, including the mayor, the chief. I want to thank all of y'all for being engaged. We got to be engaged and watch and see what's happening next. I think it'll be okay. Uh, but what happened is you got to wait to the facts come out because you will also have outside entities that will come here and throw fuel on the fire. You know, so we have to be mindful of that. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Yes, uh, and, and again, that's why I emphasize that sometimes people mail the, the two uh, 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 police departments, well, police departments together. They just say, Sheriff, the city police department, they are two different entities. And that's not the same in uh, a lot of uh, the uh, areas. So I just want to make sure that that is clear 
and that we showing up here that we were intent on starting Trans Tennessee and our police department does. They are, um, you said enough, I don't have to keep saying it, I'm sure, is that Chief Buffalo, it has a lot to do with your leadership as to how the ship sailed. And uh, the uh, community uh, thinks very highly of the chief and his department because what they do is they go out and they talk with them before an incident happens. They get into the community and you know, I've seen it. I've been out there with them. So now, surely, I'm going to yield to you, uh, uh, Mr. Manager of uh, Freeman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, uh, the two matters on the agenda next is we, we need to discuss the curfew and we need to discuss the state of emergency. Uh, the state of emergency that you currently have is reference to COVID-19. Uh, as a manager, it is my responsibility to protect this community and this council and to provide all necessary support to our police chief. So in the event that we have to call in the National Guard uh, for help, um, that cannot happen without a state of emergency. We don't have to do the state of emergency today, but we do need to discuss the protocol of what needs to happen in the event that we need that. Um, I will turn the conversation of the curfew over to the chief, um, but in a matter of supporting the chief and making sure that we do all we can as a council and I can do all I can as your manager um, to make decisions around curfew that will make um, policing a little simpler for me. So I'll allow the chief to speak on the request for the curfew. Thank you, Madam, Mr. Manager, Madam Mayor, and Council again. Uh, I, I think at, at this point in the juncture, uh, we've had a peaceful assembly and people are e expressing their views and they have the right to express their views. So I, I'll be in constant contact with the city manager if that need arises and uh, if, if uh, we see a curfew is needed, you know, I'll definitely uh, be in contact with him. Uh, council. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, what are the protocols for that? Did you, you don't need council action for that. Do you? Not tonight. I just wanted to put it out for okay. discussion. You, just have the, you have the authority to, to do that, right? The okay. curfew, yes, but the state of emergency, no, that has to come from the mayor. But I did want to put it out there that in the event that we need it, then I will be quickly corresponding with the council um, so that we're all on one page. Um, there is one matter though as it relates to the state of emergency if we enact one and we need National Guard help then we are three days away from that help it will take about three days is what we were told today uh, yes uh, you know once they ramp up and we, we go through the proper uh, state EOC yeah, it'll take about three days and so I'll be in constant communication with the chief um, you will see me on the ground quite a bit. I've been moving around quite a bit today and I will continue to be on the ground. So um, to that end, council members, please call me if you need me. I may not be in the office, um, but the chief and I will be working very closely together to ensure the safety and security of our citizens and of the city. Okay.